What's the RIAA curve for albums? Carl in Bangor, Northern Ireland asks that very question and he says, hey Paul, I have a question about the RIAA curve. What difference did it make and is it still in use? I imagine that turntables without special preamps won't benefit from the tech. So I wonder if I'm hearing the music the way the artist intended. Thank you. Okay, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's cover the RIAA curve. And just as we're starting here, this massive room, and it's, it's massive, it's really big. It's like uh, nearly 30 feet long and about 18 wide. This is Music Room One. This will be our new state-of-the-art jail cell. <laughs> this will be, it's all studs right now for Ohm's Law listeners. We're looking at the, the basic framing that goes into this thing and drywall goes on to it, not today, Saturday, so drywall goes on Monday and then the roof goes on and yeah, we're getting close. This is, this is exciting, this is getting down and the rest of the company is all moving in but this, this room is just going to be uh, out of heaven. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to get it in, to get everything settled. We'll have three rooms. This will be our research room to build our new speakers. It'll be the, the ultimate reference. We'll have Arnie Newdale's reference speakers in here. <coughs> and next door to it, uh, in the other jail cell, <laughs> is Music Room 2. That is where the Infinity IRS 5s. And if you haven't visited us yet, come on down. It's, uh, it's going to be really neat. If you thought the tours before were cool, wait till you come by and see this. This is, this is really, this is amazing. All right. The Recording Industry Association of America, I think, if memory serves correct, and it only sometimes does. Anyway, it's a group formed, I think, in the late 40s, early 50s to standardize the vinyl album into a long play record that became a standard so that equipment could all sort of work properly when you play a record. And they are absolutely still in use. Every vinyl album out there today still uses the RIAA curve. The RIAA curve Oh, let's, let me go first what, what it is. It's a 40 dB spread, uh, which is a lot, okay? And what it does is it, it reduces, well, how do I put this? Um, what's the best way? Well, it's a two-stage process. What we want to do when we put something on the record is we want to limit the bass frequencies and we want to pump up the high frequencies. And I'll tell you why in a sec. And then when we play the record, we want to reverse that process so that now the bass is flat and the high frequencies are flat. So we uh, uh, boost the treble by 20 dB at the, at the very top end uh, on the record and when we master and when we record something. And we reduce the lowest frequencies by the same 20 dB. So you get this 40 dB spread, right? Now when you play it back, you have to reverse that. And that's the RIAA encoding and, and decoding curves. To, to do that, you need uh, essentially a filter. Now like we use what's called, to, to, to unravel that in the first place, we use what's called a passive RIAA curve. And what that is, uh, if I remember, it's two resistors and two capacitors. And it in sits in the middle between two gain blocks. Okay, and those capacitors are very accurate capacitors. We use, in some cases, we've used as much as 0.1%, but typically ours are like 1% capacitors because you want that curve to be unraveled as best you can. The reason they did that uh, is, there's quite a few reasons, but the main reason was way back when, when the micro groove, the little, because it used to be in 78 RPM records, they would use something that looked like a sewing needle and big grooves. Uh, but you know, Beethoven's Ninth was on like seven discs or something, if I remember right. 
So fast speed, very big grooves. And I don't know that that had any equalization. There were hundreds of different curves that, that tried to you know, do various things. When the micro groove came out and they started producing the long play record where you could actually have like 30 minutes on a side, then the way they did that was with these tiny grooves and a little tiny diamond stylus. And to get more information on the disc at lower noise, they reduced the bass frequencies because bass notes take a lot of big wiggles on the, on the groove, where higher frequencies have little small wiggles, right? So by reducing the bass, they got more information stuffed onto the vinyl side. And by increasing the high frequencies, it didn't cost them much in terms of, of uh, playtime, but it allowed the surface noise and the, the hiss that you get from all of that to be reduced because uh, as, as the, the, the needle is scraping past all that plastic, it's making noise at higher frequencies. Well, when you reduce that, everything goes down. So if you start with a very boosted high frequency, then when you take it all down, the, the surface noise of the record goes down by about 20 dB, which is significant. And that's basically what the RAAA curve is. Every modern hi-fi or even older one past 1950 or so all have the RAAA curve. And if you're listening to records, you're listening to the RAAA curve. Hope that helps. Thanks. <laughs>